Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through my A4 Fantasy Team review for round what, 10 now, uh, where I scored a 21-35, which is another really poor score. Um, team value is sticking around that 20.28228 uh, and a round rank of almost 21,000 and I dropped um, basically 2,000 ranks to 6,600. Uh, sorry, I dropped 1,000 ranks from 5,600 to 6,600. So, yeah, that sort of goal of still getting top 5K is um, is probably more realistic also as this team just continues to sort of uh, fail on a mass scale. I mean, Bonner is one of my more consistent players at the moment with the way he's going. He's now up to an average of 95 and he's going really well in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, yeah, so... Considering Bon is one of my more uh, reliable players, it's pretty uh, poor this whole uh, this year in general. As Bond and Pelly is almost averaging just over one hundred, so that just shows how poor he's been this year, dropping almost twenty points. He's been really poor with that choice. Uh, Steele had a pretty poor game of a seventy-seven, and we'll get into the other guys when we do. But before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload. And let's get into this video. So as you can see here, here are all the stats that I was doing in the intro, and we'll just get into it. This one probably won't be the longest video, just because of, um, I guess, how um, how it went, I guess, in general. But uh, yeah, Nick Martin, 95, um, he got moved into the forward line, which basically sucked for his uh, fancy. Hayden Young 108, he's been one of the better performers this year and glad that I did not uh, get rid of him as a 101 as a defender is huge. Uh, Lockie Whitfield got the ton, a very um, efficient ton, which was annoying for Supercoach, but uh, yeah, he got to 100, which means he's averaging now 98 for the year. And aside from that, really, I mean, he did have two really poor games where he got tagged out of both games. Um, yeah, he's doing pretty well and we'll have another tag here, which is kind of annoying in round 15. Um, but nothing I can basically do about this, and it is, um, this is basically the story of my season at the moment. Um, Harry Sheasel, 119, yes, the, uh, the stuff is out of order a little bit here, the pricing, just because I was chewing and throwing with him out of the side, and his role seems to be good enough to still score really, really well, um, as I explained in the, uh, in the game review of the North, of the Essendon North game. Uh, Blake Howes, 50, he did nothing basically, got off to a really good start and then just nothing in the second half basically from him, from memory, um, so that really sucks. Zach Reed, DNP, and uh, Sam Closey, 63, covering there, and uh, Roberts got omitted to be rested um, as he didn't play in the twos and was on standby duty for the ones game um, against Carlton. Zach Butters, 112, he was uh, pretty good yet again, a huge last quarter of, I think, a 49 to basically save his score. And that will be pretty much a common denominator with all of these guys. There's a huge, um, a big last quarter uh, to, or a big, just on track to not really do well and then fail. Um, except for Nick Dacos, who was pretty much the opposite of Gunnar on track to do really well. And then I think in the last quarter he scored like 20 or, or less. Uh, Steele was on track for like a 60 and then had, I think, a 30-point last quarter. So he saved somewhat of um, a semblance of a score, I guess. Uh, still averaging 103 in his last three and 94 in his last five, which is not good enough. Um, but it seems like this year that everyone is going really, really poor if you look at averages. Uh, Romo, 118. Zorko, 116. Sarong, 114. Dunkley, 113. Sam Walsh has gone down to 111. Jordan Dawson, uh, 110. Somehow he's just started to score frequently, which is really annoying as he's sort of picked it up after we said he wouldn't. Uh, but that 155 is about to flick out of his scoring, which will mean that his L5s are 110 again. Um, so you can sort of see this year compared to last year, uh, there are a lot of guys that are not... We had so many guys 113 plus last year. Um, I mean, Nick Dacos was only 108. You had... Uh, you had English, who's not up there. You had, I think, Romo, did he go? He went up and around that marker as well last year. Uh, you had Bond, who did it, obviously. You had, um, uh, let's just see here, thinking about it. I don't know anyone else that uh, really went, I think, did, uh, what did Clayton Oliver go last year? Because he was up there as well. Um, so, yeah, you had a couple, you had, I think, more guys go big last year. You had... Uh, Golden and guys like that as well that went big. Um, 
Zachy Barrett was up around the same. I think he's even uh, below what he was doing last year as well. Um, Tim English was uh, averaging, I think, like 118. You had um, Errol Goulden, who's now averaging 103. He's about down um, 10 points per game. Even Brayshaw is down around... Um, he's down around 10 points per game. It seems like everyone is down around 10 points per game, which is really presents a lot of value next year if a lot of these guys are 10 point per game unders as it more evens out the, the field. So it'll be interesting next year. But yeah, it just sucks this year that we've sort of picked um, a lot of guys that are not necessarily scoring uh, the best. So that'll be something that I review in that um, in that sort of uh, mistakes video that I'm going to do in a couple of weeks' time. Bontempelli, 71. Nick Day cost 115. He was immense and should have taken his VC as that cost me 29 points. But I was always going to, um, I was always going to challenge it, um, given Max Gorn's matchup being the best matchup probably in the in the league at the moment against Bailey Williams. So it just so happened that he just didn't basically do anything aside. Yeah, you can see here um, three marks and zero tackles, which is just a massive low. Two lower than this game here. What's that? Five lower than this. You know, he hasn't really had a game other than the Sydney Swans game where he scored 87 as well, where he did that. Um, two frees, two frees, four. Like, it just shows that he was not um, on on his game, basically. As you can see, just the non-disposal points, just not there. And that's the reason why he was so low. Um, what are we up to? Bono, yeah, we talked about Bono in the intro. He's been going amazing. Um, Oliver, he feels like he should be kicking into gear, but he's just not, which um, it feels good for next year because next year he's going to be so unders that he'll be so much value. But this year, just not working. Jeremy Sharp, 88. He's one of the more consistent scorers at the moment as a winger, which is just surprising. Goes against what um, my sort of almost logic would say. Um, as when you sort of have up and down periods, you saw this 39 here, 65, 63. So yeah, he's had a couple of big games, which have allowed him to get to sort of a one, uh, sorry, a 79 average rather than the mid to low 70s. Darcy Wilson, a similar type of winger, 71 average. And this is what I mean with uh, the difference between Darcy Wilson and uh, Jeremy Sharp is basically Darcy Wilson's a couple of 90 games would for Jeremy Sharp be a 110, 120 type game that blow it up and um, really get that average up. Um, McCall, if I brought him at um, a late time just because I needed to get Meek in because I thought that uh, Meek would be a better selection than, um, than Fisher, probably was not the case. But yeah, uh, McAuliffe here, th three games, 61 score, an average of 40. Now he's got a minus one break even, which is really good. And he should be in the side now, given that uh, Richmond have like three fit players. Um, and McAuliffe has really shown that he can play in the last little bit. He did have, where is it here? A, he had a sub game here and then a full game here and then another full game here. So when he's playing full games, he's averaging, what's that, 50 basically. So hopefully he can have a big game sometime soon as that'll really help get his um, his pricing up. Jai Clark came on for an emergency, uh, sorry, for the sub roll, and he scored a 32. He went back to the twos and scored a 127 on two goals and 27 touches, I believe, something like that. And so, yeah, he's just too good for the twos, but not good enough for the ones, it seems like, at the moment. Um, and he's just not getting enough game time or tog in the, uh, in the ones to score really well. But his average is 39, so it'll be interesting almost next year as well uh, with him as he could almost, if he gets, if we see potentially guys like Dangerfield retire or something like that um, or move on, then um, if they start to clear the way, then guys like Jai Clark, um, I think there's like a guy, Clo I think Closey has another, there's another Closey or something, Ted Closey or something in the Geelong twos as well. He's looking really good as well. So I think there are guys from the Geelong side that you can look at next year. Gorn, 86, um, turned into a 172. That was just a bad captaincy, but the logic was there. So I'm not, yes, it's disappointing, but I'm not too annoyed about that. Uh, Meek, 108, he did really well against uh, Vicentini. Now it does have uh, the likes of Brisbane, which will be interesting, um, but hopefully he can go well. He's averaging like 45 hitouts in the last three games, so he's been absolutely huge. Um, and yeah, so hopefully he can just stack it up, get a couple of uh, tackling would be nice um, in their game against uh, Brisbane, as that'll be one of his main contributors to good points as he's averaging six tackles in the last three games. 
and he's also averaging what, a one to 116 L3. So yeah, hopefully we can just hold him through uh, the next couple of weeks and Royal Marshall doesn't burn us too much. Um, Isaac Heaney, 125. He's been absolutely huge as the uh, best sort of forward in the comp. I know that uh, Sam Flanders is averaging 108, but uh, yeah, Isaac Heaney just seems to outdo him every single week, just slightly. Um, and yeah, he um, had a couple of 90s games, which looked uh, really poor when you look back on it here. But he's just getting one, he's just tuning out 120s when he wants, and he's got, he will probably have the matchup on Bonjapelli, which will be a really interesting matchup in general. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Clayton, uh, we've moved through that already. Uh, Sam Flanders, one two two. He's been absolutely immense as well off that halfback. I know his efficiency isn't always there, but um, to score one two two in the dewy sort of conditions up in TO Stadium against Geelong was absolutely huge. Comes down and plays at I believe Marvel Stadium here. Yeah, Marvel Stadium against Carlton. So hopefully they can just sort of let him do what he wants, um, Carlton, and he can score. Uh, pretty well, as I think Carlton will be fired up and try, and I think oh, Carlton will put a score on uh, Gold Coast this week. Dylan Moore, 6-2, this was just a bad choice, simple as that. Um, I went for a guy that was scoring well, but didn't have a necessarily a good role, as I thought it was. Um, so yeah, that was just a poor choice. Um, Jack McRae, 72, he's been up and down the last couple of weeks, not really scoring well enough, so yeah, he's been a really poor choice. And, yeah, this forward line is just so poor. Um, Powell is starting to score again, uh, which is good to see as he had that really poor game a couple of weeks ago. That's at 34. Um, so, yeah, hopefully he can get back to scoring in the 80s and 90s. Um, again, as he basically put up his average. And so, yeah, got to flick around that uh, break even a little bit and then uh, push on. But, yeah, just probably shouldn't have held in the end. And then you've got Jackson's 116, which massively lowers his break even, but he's, and he's got Collingwood this week, but uh, Sean Dar- uh, Sam Darcy, Sean Darcy, Sean Darcy is back this week. Yeah, it's Sean um, is back this week, which should negate basically Jackson's scoring potential as he will have Cox in the ruck, who's a good head out, hit out ruckman, but hopefully Jackson can beat him around the ground. And then we move to the bench, and you'll see that I only had one, two, three guys on the bench scoring, which just basically sums up the season. My bench hygiene was just not there, and um, that basically caused it to have no cash gen, and that's why I had to take punts on, on guys in general. Um, but then again, there were so many other choices that I could have done throughout the season that would have made it better, but that pretty much is the video, um, which it seems like every single week I just go, yep, my bench is horrific, and that's causing my guys to really have... Uh, low scores and I genuinely don't know if I'll be able to finish uh, this side looking at it in general um, as I'll have what is it now uh, one two I do have only three rookies left so I should be able to finish it now thinking about it actually again um, as I should be able to start getting these sort of guys that aren't playing out as Garcia is projected to come back in Graham could come back in as well um, and Matty Roberts should be coming back in, but I'll be trading him out, and also Zach Reed should be coming back in as well. So I guess I am starting to get uh, much better. Um, I'm getting some luck at the draw that some of my guys are coming back in, but it's just too far, too late um, at the moment, and I wouldn't be surprised if I finish almost 3,000 points off the pace just because my team is so poor at the moment. But anyway, that is the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.